today we will be performing examination of the peripheral vascular system and i'll be walking you through each of its steps assalamu alaikum my name is dr shahzeb may i know your name please ahmed all right ahmed for this examination i'll be examining your upper arms your legs your abdomen and your neck and i'll be needing exposure of these areas is that okay with you yeah i'm okay with you All right. I'll be using my hands and my stethoscope to feel the pulses. Is that also okay? Yeah, okay. You'll not be feeling any pain or discomfort during the procedure. If you do so, then kindly let me know. Shall we begin now? Yeah, yeah, sure. Right. For examination of the venous system, the patient should ideally be in the standing position. with the legs entirely exposed we'll be looking at any dilated veins or any superficial varicosities we'll also be looking for the skin changes and peripheral stigmata of venous disease ideally we should inspect from all sides of the legs including the front the sides and the back can you turn uh, to the opposite side for me exact again so we're looking at the back side the front side turn again please Turn again, with special emphasis on looking at any ulcers, any hemosiderin deposition, any changes in the skin, and of course superficial varicosities. The medial region of the leg is especially important. The lower one third of the medial side is called the gaiter region. This is the best part to assess venous insufficiency changes. So this is the gaiter region, and this needs to exam be examined carefully because this can have venous ulceration on inspection these are the findings that we'll look at now we'll begin palpation before palpation for the venous system we need to assess the arterial patency as this governs our future examination as well as the future treatment of compression bandaging so we can check for the dorsalis pedis in both limbs as well as the posterior tibial Once we have assessed the patency, we can now move to palpation of the venous system. In this, we'll palpate for along any varicosities that are present to assess tenderness, to assess the hardness and firmness of the varicosity, and also palpate the skin for changes. Now we have drawn some varicosities here for examination purpose. We need to palpate along its length to see its tenderness, to see if it is cord-like in nature, and for temperature assessment. we'll use back of our fingers we'll do it for all varicosities and document the changes we'll now palpate the skin for changes such as edema and for any ulcer examination if there is any the medial side of the shin is best to do that for edema we just palpate superficial superior to the medial malleolus press our fingers in deep and see for any pitting if there is pitting edema present we need to grade it of how far up it extends and alongside we can palpate the skin for changes in the texture in chronic venous insufficiency we can have a leathery skin other than that we now need to palpate all the way up to the saphenofemoral junction to assess the saphenovarix for that we'll follow the great saphenous vein all the way up once we do have that junction which is just medial to the femoral artery we need to ask the patient to cough can you cough for me please <laughs> if any impulse is felt on coughing this is indicative or positive for a saphenovarix if any varicosities are present we also need to do the tap test for a similar thrill the tap test involves palpating the proximal and the distal parts of the vein at the same time we will now tap retrogradely to assess for a thrill or tap in the other hand we can tap it this way and we can also do this the more reliable method is to assess for the opposite direction and that direction involves using your superior hand for the tap if this is also positive this is very much indicative of incompetent venous valves and show a communication between the two points of the vein if communication is found to be present we'll extend our upper hand above slightly moving up closer each time
with the patient lying down, we can perform a tourniquet test for varicose veins. For this test, we'll first need to milk all the varicose veins down to their junction. For this, we'll elevate the leg and gently milk all the veins using the hand. Once all the veins have been emptied, we need to bind a tourniquet at the cephalofemoral junction. Because of incomplete exposure due to privacy, I'll be binding the tourniquet just slightly lower to the SFJ junction. But ideal setting should involve binding it at the SFJ junction. Can you keep this leg, leg up for me? Thank you. We need to ensure that the tourniquet is tight enough so that all the superficial veins have been compressed. Once that is done, we now ask the patient to stand and look for venous pooling beneath the tourniquet. If the venous pooling is there, that means the incompetent valves are below the level of the tourniquet. And if they are not, that means the level is above the tourniquet. We can subsequently move the tourniquet down at lower levels and assess where the level of incompetent valves are. This is the utility of this test. So can you stand up for me now? With the patient standing, we need to look all the way down to see for venous pooling. If there is no venous pooling present, that indicates that the perforators or incompetent valves are above the level of the tourniquet. This needs to be reported repeated on the other side as well. That's it. Now to assess the deep venous system, we can perform the Perthes test. This involves binding a tourniquet just below the knee tightly. We now ask the patient to contract their calves by standing on their tiptoes repeatedly. Can you do that for me? Again, keep doing it for like five to six times. This involves contraction of the calf muscles and will drain any superficial veins into the deep venous system. If there is insufficiency in the deep venous system or thrombotic obstruction, the superficial veins will not empty and that indicates a deep venous insufficiency. But if the superficial veins do empty after this test, this indicates that the deep venous system is patent. Thank you. We have now performed the tourniquet and Perthes test. In places where you don't have a tourniquet available, you can do a trendelenburg back test which simply involves occluding the septinofemoral junction with your finger and assessing the venous pooling similar to what we did in the tourniquet test. Now, I would like to thank the patient. Thank you, Ahmed, for your cooperation. My examination is complete now. Further assessment of the venous sufficiency using Doppler studies and assessment of the motor and sensory exam is critical for completion of my examination. Along with this, the lymph nodes in the inguinal region and the popliteal nodes can be palpated. Thank you.